like to uh, take a moment to welcome everyone. Um, my name is Doug Bean. I'm the owner and managing partner at Schaeferitz and Bean. And uh, we uh, want to welcome you to our Business Builder Speaker Series. Uh, the third Wednesday every month at 1 p.m. by Zoom, we bring a speaker that we think is going to have content that will be valuable and relevant to you, the real estate agent community that we serve. Um, we know you're busy. We appreciate you giving us your time. Uh, to make the most of our time, we encourage you to ask questions and participate utilizing the chat box. Uh, before I introduce this month's speaker, I'd like to tell you to mark your calendar for next month. Our business builder speaker will feature Mark Hammond from Union Home Mortgage. Uh, he's going to talk about attracting more cash buyers with delayed financing, how you can buy as a cash buyer and then subsequently refinance and treat it as a sale for the purpose of getting the best terms on your loan. And that will be March 15th from 1 to 2 p.m. Without further ado, I'm pleased to introduce Zach Knight, tactical leader, founder, and author. Uh, Zach is going to lead us on leading yourself so you can lead others more effectively. Uh, so welcome, Zach. Thanks for being our guest today, and I am going to turn it over to you. Awesome. Thanks, Doug. I appreciate it, brother. And uh, how, how is everybody doing? Um, I love uh, this whole thing that Doug's putting together. It's pretty awesome. Um, so I want to give a quick rundown, but I do want to preface a few things for y'all. I'm probably going to talk to y'all a lot. Uh, I don't do normal formal presentations. I love staying very conversational. And uh, this topic that I'm talking about today from my book, it's uh, my, a lot of my personal journey. And I think it's a lot of something that a lot of people can relate to. Um, and I love having that conversation. So most likely I will be, uh, asking, pausing, stopping for, for y'all to give insights, input, any relatable pieces. Uh, so definitely keep that in mind. Uh, so if I sit here and look at you and stare at you for a second, um, just know I'm waiting on a response, but I'll tell you, I'm waiting on a response. So uh, I definitely encourage y'all unmute and chat back and forth. If y'all have any questions or anything that pops up as we talk about it, um, definitely let me know. So first and foremost, again, Doug, thanks for having me. Uh, I think this is a little bit unique for a real estate uh, group to be putting things on like this and, and for, for Doug to be leading the way um, with this educational piece, business building or having a speaker series. Um, this topic is, is maybe unique um, with my background that maybe a lot of y'all haven't seen, haven't experienced for yourself. Um, to give a little bit of a deep dive into my background, um, I was actually a police officer in Smyrna, Georgia. Um, I was born and raised there. So as a police officer first, I, I did a lot of uh, gang investigations, narcotics work, um, did some undercover stuff with the SWAT team. Um, then beyond that, uh, I left that and joined the military. So I did everything backwards, joined the military at 28, uh, went right into basic training. Um, in basic training, I left that, went to officer school, became an infantry officer, um, and then deployed in 2019 to Afghanistan, uh, where I deployed the Green Berets um, and ran operations of the Green Berets for about a year. Um, during that time, I lost uh, six out of 50 guys um, in 2019. We we're still pretty busy over there in a lot of ways. So a lot of what I talk about is coming from that experience um, and then how that transition piece, uh, a lot of that transition piece back into this world. But one thing that I, I realize, even if you're not a veteran, um, I think we all have lived through difficult things in different, difficult ways, right? We all have our own stumbling blocks over the years. So I, I love keeping that piece relatable. Uh, my background comes from the government side of the work, but also uh, I think uh, a lot of it you'll kind of recognize as stuff that we we struggle with as business owners, as professionals, and just trying to make it in this world, if you will. Um, back in November, I released my first book. It's called The Legacy of Love, A Journey of Self-Mastery. And that's a, a big piece of what I'm going to talk about today is what I realized across the years of leadership uh, from leading in the police department, leading men in combat, and no offense, ladies, uh, the infantry side didn't have any, any ladies over in Afghanistan. So when I say men, I definitely don't mean it as disrespect as I didn't have any females assigned to me. So when I say leading men in combat, it just happened to be I was stuck with a bunch of dudes for a year. Um, doesn't It's not as fun as it sounds, I promise. Um, and uh, that's where a lot of that piece came from. 
Um, outside of the military, I currently own seven businesses myself um, from uh, a big piece in Buckhead where I do some business coaching, business consulting, um, and then also have a 501c nonprofit for veteran business owners. So uh, what I love, why I love this series is I'm big on educating business owners, business professionals. And as I have coached and trained individuals over the years, I kind of recognized one thing in myself that I then started recognizing more in clients. I really realized that if something was bothering me at home, it always fed into work and it always fed into business and vice versa. If I had a really bad day at work. It usually went into the home, right? And it's, it's one of those where it's hard to really separate yourself from the stress of business, the stress of life, uh, trying to make money, trying to make a family, right? All these different capacities, they really started to cross blend. Um, this is going to be one of those pieces. Um, oh, Sandra, I'm going to try to keep the chat box, uh, pay attention to that as well. Um, Sandra, appreciate the insights. Definitely uh, uh, Army. You know, if you said Air Force, I'd probably be judging you right about now, but uh, got a smart brother with the Army side. Um, but has anybody Zach, recognized that? So you know. Say it again, Doug. Uh, Zach, I'll be monitoring the chat box for you mm -hmm. as well. So you won't have to worry about that. I'll interject when we get some uh, quotes from the chat box for you. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks, Doug. Um, so talking about that, that cross blending, right? Going from struggling in work or struggling in the personal life. Has anybody ever recognized that where you like carry it into the home or carry it into work? Like I'm twice divorced. So like I definitely carried work into the home life. Anybody ever struggle with that? Oh, this is the first test, y'all. The first test. I see a Zach, couple smiles. I'll, I'll at least. Go ahead, Doug. I'll share a story with you that uh, years ago when the real estate market was down, we needed help at our firm, but we didn't want to hire anybody. And our kids were into school age. So I told mm -hmm. my wife, you're going to come to work with me. You're going to help me out at the office. And she did it with me for a week, and she paid me what I've told her is one of the kindest compliments she's ever given me. After working for a week, she said, I had no idea how stressful your job was. She said, but you don't bring it home. You come home in a good mood. You don't come home and kick the dog. And she said, you leave it at work. And she said, and now I have an honest appreciation for that. And, and I've always uh, worn that privately uh, or worn that uh, – uh, proudly that uh, job can be stressful, but I try to not bring it home and interfere with the home life. Yeah, and, and that's huge. It's it's an interesting thing that y'all do in the real estate space, not just real estate agents. Like I think real estate agents might get the brunt of it um, from the client base, right? Buying and selling a property. Um, Jason Fleeman's in here and um, he's in the middle of selling a house for me right now, right? And he's like, every time I have a gripe and complain, guess who's getting yelled at? Jason. But then I imagine on the back end, if you're not a real estate agent, he's probably then passing the buck and hollering at somebody else or hollering at one of y'all, the paperwork's not quick enough. Like the home buying and, and the residential and real estate side of, of life, it's it's amazingly personal for a lot of people, right? It's a lot of forever homes. It's usually the biggest investment we're going to make. You know, I don't love the idea of dropping 400 grand on a house. You know, it's like, oh man, that's a big chunk for the next 30 years. So it becomes a very personal experience for a lot of people and that stress gets carried forward, right? And I think a lot of us uh, outside of real estate probably don't recognize how much that stress uh, could impact. And at the end of the day, there's only so much you can do with paperwork and so much you can do with the law and the legalities attached to it. So I understand there are constraints, but um, a, a lot of folks, I, I imagine, take it out on y'all, right? And and I don't know if anybody's outside of real estate or everybody here is mostly real estate. I know uh, Trisha Williams uh, from my side of the world. She's um, not in the real estate piece, um, but deals with a bunch of clients and deals with a bunch of stuff in the in the promo space, right? So when an order doesn't go right, I imagine she gets yelled at. So just a smidge. <laughs> Um, and, and that's, that's the, the piece that I struggled with over the years when I was in law enforcement, um, I was a, a police officer from 2009 to right up into the end of 2017. Um, it's really hard to, uh, to compartmentalize that piece, right? Really hard to take a really bad day as a police officer where 
no telling what could happen and then not take it home for somebody that might not understand and might not relate to those stressors. Right. Um, she never did a ride along with me. Uh, my, my first wife never did a ride along with me. So never quite understood that side of the world. And it ended up costing that relationship um, because it was just too much of a stressor. Too many things went different directions. And then coming back from Afghanistan, this was, you know, my piece of the struggle, having a lot of guilt coming back from Afghanistan of losing guys and dealing with that loss and dealing with losing um, families, losing individuals. And one of the best pieces for me um, when I was in law enforcement, I was really blessed. Um, I actually went through Dell Carnegie's Academy here in Atlanta and got uh, some leadership lessons that I uh, got certified in Dale Carnegie, went back and, and taught Dale Carnegie on the leadership side. Um, is anybody not familiar with Dale Carnegie? He's like a John Maxwell leadership expert. He wrote uh, How to Win Friends, Influence Others. Um, if y'all haven't seen that book, it's definitely a phenomenal one. Uh, talks about essentially emotional intelligence and how to talk to people really well, how to um, deal with folks in a lot of ways. And um, I went back to those lessons um, and you'll see several throughout my book. Um, I went back to those lessons overall when I was going through some of my struggles and recognizing different pieces. And one of the big things for me was creating like winning habits and designing your life to succeed um, overall in like the day to day. Um, as I left the military, what ended up happening, I got uh, injured um, in Afghanistan, I have nerve damage in my left arm, uh, pretty much have no feeling from the elbow down in my left arm, looks fine, looks normal, but uh, obviously impacts grabbing things and, and uh, typing stuff like that. Um, and, and what I realized, you know, that was a big struggle for me transitioning back into the business space where I had to figure out how do I still wake up and go to the gym, um, have those healthy habits, have that capacity where I didn't have that structure anymore. And this is something I've seen in the corporate side, right? You go from the corporate world into business ownership, or you become a real estate agent, Jason Fleeman, I, I think can attest to this. He went from a high level uh, tennis coach for 30 years into a real estate agent that has no structure and construct behind what is a real estate agent. You don't clock in at eight o'clock. You don't leave at 5 p.m. You know, there's not much structure attached to his schedule. So one of the big things that I've seen in that struggle as you transition into entrepreneurship, business ownership, um, different aspects, the, the one of the foundational pieces of leading yourself, leading myself, became creating and designing my day around winning habits. Um, that could be morning routines, evening routines, getting up, um, getting out of the bed, not hitting the snooze button. How many snoozers do we have in the room? Anybody snooze hit that snooze button like 16 times? Trisha, I know you're pointing at yourself and not your husband. He's way too nice to be that snoozer. <laughs> um, that's one of those things, you know, there's uh, psychology behind hitting the snooze button and how it actually makes it more difficult to get up and get and get moving and, and waking up. And um, there's a great speech given by uh, Admiral McRaven a few years ago. Um, and it talks about making your bed first thing in the morning, right? Start your day with a win. You make your bed, you get out of your bed, you make your bed. If you make your bed, you're not tempted to climb back into it, right? You don't want to mess up the sheets. Um, that's such a, a huge piece for me where um, leaving uh, the corporate constructs, leaving something where you're told when and where to be, I created a morning routine that's very, very structured and rigid, uh, rigid-ish, I'll be honest. You know, we there's always flexibility in everything we do. But um, a big piece for me was waking up, going to the gym first thing, coming back, and uh, I, I rotate my days, whether it's meditation, journaling, reading, um, feeding my body, and then feeding my mind. I think those are the two most impactful things I can do throughout my day before the stressors of clients start at 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock. Um, I know for a lot of y'all, it might start at 6 a.m. or a house showing at 10 p.m., you know, whatever that has to be with the schedule. Is there anybody here? Is there anybody that has that relatability attached to having structure in the day or has struggled? Anybody want to share their morning routine and how they've been able to craft that winning habit? What's up, Tricia? All right. So we still have a 16 year old at home and still in school. So I get up every morning with him at six o'clock in the morning. I don't have to, but I do it because I want to see my child off. Mm. And then I might sit and play on my phone for a little bit. And I kind of set a timer as to how long I'm going to do that. 
Then I get up, I go get dressed, I put my makeup on, I do my hair. I work in my own house, but I get dressed. I, I make myself do what I would do if I were going to go into an office. And then by 9 a.m., I am in my office and I am sitting down and returning emails and I schedule my day out like that. You know, I think that's a huge thing. And for me, I don't get on social media or the big ones checking emails first thing in the morning. You ever wake up and you start scrolling and you miss like you have 50 new emails first thing in the morning. That is such like a, oh God, this is going to be a long day feeling, right? So one of the things I do to your point, Trisha, I love protecting that time frame. Um, social media, I, I'm not a huge social media guy. Um, you know, TikTok. All right, I'll be I'll be honest. TikTok gets me, y'all. I can scroll TikTok for 30 minutes and, and it ruins me. Um, but other social media platforms, you know, with so much negativity out there attached to stuff, I really try to, especially in the morning, kind of protect and preserve the mindset, protect and preserve, like starting the day off right. I think that's such a huge thing for me personally. Um, and I know waking up at four in the morning and going to the gym is not everybody's cup of tea. Not anything I ever tell somebody, hey, you have to do this to be successful. I think it's kind of silly to be so rigid where some of the military guys out there um, have more of that mindset. And if y'all have ever seen uh, uh, David Goggins, anybody, uh, he had a great book, Can't Hurt Me. Phenomenal guy. He's the only Navy SEAL, Army Ranger, and Air Force JTAC, some fanciness in the Air Force. Um, super hardcore guy, runs 100 mile races, tells you you have to wake up at four in the morning, you have to do this and this. That is not practical, y'all. I don't know what he does with this day and does with his life, but that is not practical to be like that hardcore. It just doesn't doesn't translate to me. So I, I know a lot of folks are like, oh, he's a military guy, he just has all this discipline. Nah, a lot of veterans don't have any discipline after after leaving the military. It's like it's like you go one way or the other. It's like uh, no different than the corporate space or or when we hit when COVID hit, and you don't have to go to the office anymore. How many people maintain, oh, I get to sleep in until nine o'clock now instead of waking up at 5 a.m. You know, that structure, that discipline is not an intrinsic gift that a lot of people are given or anybody's really given. So I think there's that flexibility and that grace that you should have with yourself as you're creating the structure um, and really starting your day off, whatever it may be. If it's start at 7 a.m. and sit with a cup of coffee and read the newspaper, that's a beautiful thing to do, right? Whatever gets your day started with that intentionality. Is there anybody else that has that little bit of a morning routine that they love starting uh, their morning with, their day with that they want to share? I heard a clip. Zach, I'll just mention. Oh, go ahead, Dan. I'll mention just like Tricia, um, when COVID started and I would work from home occasionally, and I've had COVID on two different occasions. So each time I had to work from home for a week, but even when I'm working from home, I get up at the same time, I shower and I get dressed in my coat and tie, just like I'm going to work, even though I'm going to my office in my house and my family would make fun of me. They said, why are you putting on your coat and tie? You're working from home. I said, but I'm working and these are my work clothes and this is what I wear to work. Yeah. And I might be on a Zoom call and I wanna be prepared. So this is just what I do to work, and uh, and I do it even if I was working from home. It's your we uniform. We just don't say. What'd you say, Tricia? I said it's your uniform. What we're wearing professionally is our uniform. Absolutely. You That's know, right. we won't we won't talk about if the pants are optional. You know, we never know. You know, as long as the top half is is squared away. Um, you know, and I think that's a big thing. There were so many so many people, and they started doing studies on that piece of the people that didn't wake up and like get dressed for the day struggled during COVID because it was one of those, it got too flexible. Um, but they, they showed that if you woke up, same thing, Doug, you wake up, you actually get dressed and ready for the day. It's a great way to maintain that structure. And I, I want to highlight this piece where um, I don't think uh, discipline is intrinsic in a lot of folks. I, I personally to get more into the personal story and, um, I do talk about this a lot in my book and where a lot of this had to come from. Um, like a lot of veterans, I was near suicidal uh, about two years ago. Um, I was going through a lot of really big struggles. I had actually just turned down um, an eight-figure offer for one of my companies. Um, thought everything was like on paper. If you look on paper, I was like obscenely successful at 32 years old. We had business going. I was getting promoted, but I just injured my arm, just about to have surgery in my arm. 
Um, and I was carrying a lot of things and, and it sounds like the, the typical veteran struggle. Um, and I hear it way too often, but I was drinking way too much. Didn't have that mentality of like, I'm going to wake up and I'm going to hustle today. I'm going to do this that, and the other. Um, and I found myself at the end of a dock ready to go. And there, there were several things that shifted and several things that I've really started to struggle with about losing my uniform. So you talk about your uniform in the day. Um, for me, I was getting discharged out of the military because of the arm injury. It makes me non-deployable. And once the once you're injured, the, the military pretty much has nothing to do with you at that point. So I was losing what I'd worked for for so many years and was forced being forced to lose that construct, lose that community that I had. And it really drove me to a, a point of being nearly one of those statistics. And one of the biggest things I realized and it, it actually wasn't something I realized. I actually had a, a battle buddy, an accountability partner, a, a friend of mine that hit me upside the head that one of the biggest struggles I had is that I had taken the time to do all this external knowledge. I got, I got my MBA, I have credentials, I have business coaches, consultants, like people that helped me and supported me externally. And I did all this external learning, but I never took the time to learn more about myself. I never took the time to essentially fall in love with myself as I grow, I've grown and had different transitions. So when I, when the, the title of the book being called the legacy of love, a journey of self mastery, it's not a Nicholas Sparks movie by any means, right? It's not the love story about a uh, guy meets girl and they, they run away and get, and get married and kiss in the rain and all that fun stuff. Right. This is truly about that journey of falling back in love with myself after losing that identity. And that's where that self mastery piece came from is I, I literally had to design my day around those things. What do I love about myself? How can I further the world, further myself and actually contribute in a way that I hadn't done before uh, because I didn't have that uniform. I didn't have somebody else's mission and vision and values to really support what I was doing um, and support those endeavors. Uh, so it became a really big struggle for me. And it was something that I think uh, we saw a lot in COVID. We saw a lot where people started um, a little bit having those struggles in, in that personal space, struggles um, not being around people. A lot of us really enjoy, uh, I don't personally, I'm an introvert. So like COVID was like great for me. I'm like, oh, I get to work from home all the time now. It's great. And I don't have to be around people. Um, but it was one of those that a lot of people really enjoy that office work, right? Or not necessarily the office work, but enjoy being around people. They enjoy and they kind of get that uh, refilling from people and, and being present. Um, but that was one of my biggest struggles. That's something that I had to really figure out how I was going to design my day, how I could re-inject purpose into my life outside of something I'd worked for for 15 years and then lost. It was a heavy transition for me. Um, so that was a big piece for me. Anybody else have anything like that that you've struggled with that um, y'all want to share with the group? And this, I know this is like super scary to like talk about y'all. This is stuff like nobody wants to talk about this stuff. I'm going to censor it because Doug's recording it. So I don't want you to have to go back and bleep out too much language, but nobody wants to talk about this stuff. It's like terrifying to talk about. It's something that's really difficult. So by no means, anybody has to share. Um, and I think it's pronounced, is it Anik? Yes. <laughs> Perfect. I saw yes, you on exactly. mute. What you got? Well, um, I just wanted to say that during the COVID, um, we, I have to go to the office because um, in the insurance industry, people have to have insurance. And I was in the mm -hmm. section where uh, we have like a moratorium that we were those, um, I don't know how the government call it. We have a paperwork that shows that, you know, we can, we need to be, we can go to the office. Yeah. So basically, I have to maintain the routine, get up early, wake up my kids, just like uh, Trisha was saying earlier, she had, um, they have to wake up at six o'clock because the mm -hmm. bus kind of, they got to pick, get the bus before like 6.30. So, <laughs> and um, be in the office, try to help people out. Um, it's not, it, it, it wasn't. The outside was dry, but, you know, the fact that you need to be on the phone, trying to see how people are doing. There wasn't a lot of people driving, but people needed to have insurance still because yeah. there were people that have to uh, go to work, people that works in the store, stuff like that. So basically, it's, 
and, and, and thank you so much for for serving the country being in the um, um, veteran and stuff like that that that's a huge thing I don't know how you were able to hold it and you very strong be able to uh, I hear a lot of stuff when people go to that trans that uh different kind of work, serving the military, seeing people injured and the pain and stuff like that. I don't know how you were able to overcome all that struggle. Uh, I just commend you for for the hard work that you did for our country. Thank you so much. Oh, I, I appreciate the kind words and uh, I'll be honest, and this is something that I talked with Doug about um, when, when you talked about doing this it's 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 not easy right like and i think we can all relate to life ain't easy in general um it's a big piece that for me it's no different than going to the gym and i like to simpl simplify things like i'm i'm not that smart y'all i was an infantry guy in the army right so i'm not a brilliant guy so i love breaking things down into like small tactical steps like what makes this easy to dissect for us because at the end of the day like life should be simple right we don't have to overcomplicate it um, one of those big things for me, um, as I was going through some of those darker periods was recognizing like the, just like the gym, you don't go to the gym, do one repetition, one day at the gym and you end up walking out like Arnold Schwarzenegger. Right. <laughs> so that's not a thing that, that happens. What I had to recognize, it's just like my mindset. It's just like journaling, meditation. Um, I, I actually do yoga. I, I'm getting, uh, this year I'm, I'm heading off to a, uh, a veteran organization that does uh, yoga certification. So trying to bring back like PTSD recovery through yoga. Um, it sounds super silly. I'm, I'm like a, not a little dude by any means and tattoos and beard. And, you know, I get the, the, the look and the image and they're like, Oh yeah, I love yoga. And I love it meditating. I love journaling. And, definitely you know, hit the, the yoga. It does. You know, and it, it, it's huge. You, you ha and you have to put in the reps and that's something that, um, you have to put in the repetition over and over and over again. And that's what truly that how I look at discipline. Discipline isn't something that's intrinsic that you're just gifted with. It's getting up and doing those things on the days you don't want to do them, right? And that's truly what discipline was for me and how I started crafting and creating that where I wanted to be able to uh, break out of. Like, I didn't, I don't think anybody likes being unhappy. And once you really realize how unhappy you are, or maybe like for me, I was just kind of like, oh, this is what life should be, right? Life is just miserable for everybody and, and we're all just suffering. I'm like, it, it honestly, like that's kind of the, it's silly to say it, but like that was the mindset. Like this is just life. Life, life sucks sometimes. Life's not fair. Those things were like such a negative context for me. It really took somebody like snapping me out of it. Hey, there's so much more to life than like being miserable all the time and like um, going through different pieces of life alone and like just suffering, quote unquote, right? Um, a big piece of that for me was like therapy. I love my therapist. Um, a lot of guys don't like talking about therapy. Men in general, we don't like talking about this stuff, right? It's vulnerable. It's not manly. We don't like talking about doing yoga and meditation and stuff. And, and honestly, that's a big problem. I think men need to be able to share and have the vulnerability attached to sharing that piece, like de uh, destigmatizing therapy. Like guys, like that's a huge thing. Like let's go to therapy and like talk about our feelings a little bit because if we don't talk about it, what ends up happening? It's shoved in the closet and then the volcano erupts. And then that's when it starts feeding back into the home or feeding the business and different aspects where um, you start seeing the negative and the negativity really starting to feed out more. So understanding a couple of those things, I think was huge for me. Um, one thing that I, I really love um, that I, I do a lot, and I'm curious if anybody's willing to get feedback on this piece, and it's actually a Del Carnegie um, rule. So about, shoot, it was probably about 10 years ago when I went through, but all the instructors got this little Del Carnegie golden book. And I, I love this thing, um, and I've kept it, I keep it on my desk as a great reminder. And one of Del Carnegie's golden rules is to throw down a challenge. Um, it's something that people love overcoming challenges and and being challenged by something when it's in the realization of the mindset of like this is something to accomplish right um so throwing down a challenge is a big thing that i do with a lot of my clients i do it with a lot of the the veteran guys right vets guys we love to be challenged in a capacity because we're competitive and in y'all's world in in our world the business world 
it's a very competitive market. So one of the, I love throwing down challenges to people. I love helping people craft how to like challenge each other. And it can be a team environment. It can be by yourself and you're doing something or finding it. I think an accountability partner is one of the greatest things you can do, whether it's like a, a gym buddy or, uh, you know, if it's not the significant other, uh, sometimes they get biased towards things. So finding that friend and accountability partner that you can really rely on, you can call up and, and say, hey, this is what I want you to hold me accountable to and how I want to be challenged. Um, so throwing down a challenge and, and to give context to that, um, I do this with several clients when, when they're struggling with something or they find that they might not be able to overcome uh, uh, an invisible ceiling, right? What's that roadblock that for some reason I just can't get past this level of success, right? Um, so I usually throw down a challenge of some sort that breaks them out of their current monotony that they're driving forward. Um, you know, the definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over and over again and expecting a different result, right? So how do you break free from that linear path that we may not know that we're on? So throwing down a challenge is like a beautiful thing that I, I love doing to just kind of break um, that piece of it and recognizing like if you're beating your head against the wall, realize like if you take a step back from the wall, there are ways to go around the wall. You can go left, you can go right, you can go up, you can go down, right? You can dig a hole under it, get a ladder, go over the wall. But so many of us just want to like beat our head against the wall constantly. Like, oh, this is this has to be the way to move forward. And we fail to realize like there's so many other ways to move around. Um, so one of the things I do, and, and uh, like I said, Fleeman's in here. Uh, Jason Fleeman does uh, a lot in the business space with me and um, it's great connection with Doug. So um, one of the things that we've done with Jason um, no offense to him. I'm going to call him out a little bit, y'all. We're going to snitch on Jason. Um, Jason has a tendency to be uh, kind of squirrely, like ADD. Anybody have that like squirrel, like shiny object syndrome? Ooh, that's really pretty. Let me go look at that over there. Anybody? No, not a single person. Okay, cool. So Jason's the only one with ADD in here um, and, and struggles with the same focus. So one of the things I do with Jason, um, talking about different things, um, he's on this great series right now of creating um, I'm trying to remember how many it was, Jason, but it was like 45 videos in 45 days or 90 videos in 90 days where he's doing a series of videos to further all the endeavors he's doing. One of the things he did was like freaking brilliant. I've never seen a real estate agent do this the other day. As his video, he did a um, live stream of an open house at one of the houses he listed recently. So he like propped up the camera and did a live stream the whole time and just something similar to this. And it ended up, I, I think he ended up getting a couple offers on the, on the house that day. But the challenge was like, how do you, you have to get yourself out there more. So your challenge is like, get on video. And he, he's not on video right now. Hates being on video, hates being on camera. Right. And that was one of his challenges. So like throwing a challenge down to him to break free of what that linear path was for a little while and gave him one task to focus on. Right. Your task, get a video going every day, put a video up do something, um, what he ended up doing, and it can be simple stuff, right? And I'm not necessarily challenging you all to do this, but um, we broke it down simple, like, hey, as you're walking the dog, and this is what I do every day at lunchtime at noon, uh, I have a 16 year old Husky, I got her uh, right out of high school, she's asleep at my feet right now. Every day at noon, I have my counter blocked off, walk Queen Sadie. She is a queen, so I make everybody call her Queen Sadie. Um, but I walk Queen Sadie, so I told Jason he's got a, a Belgian Mountain one. I'm like, every time you walk the dog, go take a selfie video. Just talk about the weather, talk about something, get more comfortable with getting on camera, right? Um, so we've talked about different capacities, but he's actually shifted that to now is as he's going to lunch. You know, he does a lot of business up in uh, Alpharetta, Avalon, um, that whole area, Johns Creek area. Um, so what he does is as he goes to lunch to like a local business, he'll actually highlight the business. So now he's creating impact and relationship in that area as a real estate agent. Like, that's brilliant. Let me go in and highlight this business, this amazing sandwich that I'm going to go chomp on and highlight those. And that's part of the video series he's doing. Um, but it ended up breaking free and like gives him that focus, if that makes sense. And it broke him free of like, what does a real estate agent need to post? Let me post the same social media graphic over and over and over again, and then send out a calendar for the Falcon schedule. That's a magnet to throw on, you know, how can we be different in this space? So realizing that a piece of, um, oh, wow, it's funny. He just texted me and said he's driving. So he can't talk smack back to me. I love this. Um, but recognizing like, how do you break free from the standard of what is in the industry? How do you be innovative? How do you get that forward 
piece that you can like drive forward really hard for yourself. And when you look at it and how it relates and part of the limiting belief a lot of us have, I don't want to be on video. Nobody wants to hear me talk. Um, maybe there's a, a stage fright or fear attached to being in front of rooms. Um, and that was a, a piece he didn't want to get on video and wanted to uh, had a little bit of that where he didn't necessarily want to facilitate. And now he's like facilitating rooms, mixers, meetups, different things. Had He had uh, Doug on a panel. Um, shoot, that's probably been a couple months now, but had him on a panel at the Buckhead Club and talking about amazing pieces of real estate. Um, and he's pushed himself there to challenge, but recognizing that limiting belief impacts the personal life, how you lead yourself, right? Then it feeds into business. How are you leading others? How are you leading clients? And we talk about leading others and leadership. We all lead people. Leadership is intrinsic in every role we have, whether it's you know, leading somebody to a closing and write and writing that paper, a client based, right? Leading a spouse, leading your family, the, everybody's in a capacity of leadership. So recognizing how it ebbs and flows back and forth. And that piece of leading yourself can really impact leading those other people. And that kind of ties us all the way back into my big call to action, my big thing for today. And I know uh, Doug said, leave a little bit of time for Q&A and conversation. Um, a big piece that I'd love to discuss with y'all is talking about a challenge that you can challenge yourself with to break yourself out of, right? Whatever piece you might be struggling with. And a lot of us don't want to share that personal piece. And we don't necessarily want to share that struggle. But I think an amazing thing to leave y'all with is like developing a challenge for yourself that you can throw down a challenge for yourself, finding an accountability partner that will keep you accountable to whatever challenge that is that you want to overcome and that thing that you want to drive forward with. So if anybody's willing to unmute, chat through it, I know we're heading to Q and A and Doug's probably going to yell at me to be quiet for a second. If there are any questions, um, I definitely would love to hear that piece. If anybody's open to a challenge, finding out how do you craft that for yourself? How do you stay accountable for it? Um, I love that piece of conversation. So um, I'm going to stop for a second and let anybody unmute. And I know, Doug, it looked like your audio went back and forth sideways on the phone. So I don't know if you have any insights attached to it. But um, while he's connecting back to audio, does anybody have any pieces attached to that about developing a challenge for themselves or how to like create that competitive drive, whether it's personal, professional, and how they intermingle, intermingle as a whole? See, I'm that guy that's not going to call people out, but it's like fun to call people out. And if Jason wasn't driving, I would have definitely called him out. But he's driving. So apparently, you know. You say, Malone, I, I hear you, but can't really hear yes, much. Welcome, what you're Mr. Malone. Yes, I'll say something. I mean, you touched on something that is uh, usually a pretty difficult for me to commit to. And if anybody sees me on social media, they will they told me you, you never see me on video. And I rarely post. And that is a fault of my own. It's something I should be doing. I should be more active and participatory. With. So listen to you, I've got a challenge. Not so much for getting on social media, but doing the challenge that you were trying to get your friends to. And is doing the video every day, getting used to doing the video. And um, that's a good challenge for me. So I'm going to commit to it. I'm going to try to commit to it for maybe the next 30 days and see how well I do it. And I appreciate you opening my eyes to Absolutely. Well, I appreciate that, brother. I think, you know, that's one of those, honestly, it, it's, it's simple but it's not easy, right? It's such a simple thing to throw a 30 second video up there, but it ain't easy, especially every single day. And it's so funny how our mind works with it, where it can be something like you're walking around and Malone, you're, I see the real estate side. Are you an agent? What, what part of real estate are you in? I'm, I'm a real estate broker. I, uh, I'm active in the real estate market in Atlanta, uh, Alpharetta, Georgia, and I'm also, active in the real estate industry in the northern Louisiana. Nice. So I'm pretty, pretty active in both places. So, uh, it keeps me pretty busy and I constantly move from one area to the other. Yeah. Physically. Yeah. 
I mean, and, and think about all the opportunities, especially in real estate, because at the end of the day, y'all deal in people. And there's so many opportunities, no different than what Jason did. And I love how he he created this in a different capacity, right? He did it in a way where he wasn't highlighting himself. A lot of reasons people don't want to get on video or don't want to get on podcasts, like they don't want to talk about themselves. But what he did, he highlighted clients. He highlights local businesses. He highlights others around him. Um, highlight your your drive or your flight over to New Orleans, right? Like there's so many avenues of where you can do something that is simple, just not easy, right? And a 30 second video could be a, a simple thing that you can just throw up there and like, you know, it's a rapport builder, it's a relationship builder. And that's what this world is based on, right? You got to be able to shake hands with folks, break bread with people. And it can be that simple of a, a, an easy way to highlight, look at this amazing thing that's happening in New Orleans. And I've never been to New Orleans. So I, I hear it's fun over there, but also trouble. So I'm gonna let you yes. highlight the trouble <laughs> over there. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of fun and a lot of trouble. Yeah. Awesome, man. Thank I you so much. It. Of course, Malone, I appreciate you. Uh, and I say it's Malone. Uh, I hope that's the first name or the last name or a name. It is the last name. My name is Michael Malone. Michael Malone. Beautiful. Um, well, I'm going to end up uh, getting Doug to connect us so that I can stalk the videos. Because uh, I think that's an awesome one, man. And uh, I can at least make fun of you as you're getting in trouble in New Orleans. Awesome. Does anybody else have anything they want to throw in there? Anything they want to put out as a challenge or, or craft a challenge? Zach, I'll, I'll throw one out. Yeah. What's up, Doug? Um, there's uh, this concept of self-talk, what we tell ourselves about, you know, how we perceive ourselves. And there's a, a country song I heard recently that talked about it. And the, the chorus said, the cruelest lies of all the lies we tell are the ones we tell ourselves. Uh, and ever since I've heard that song, it, it has just made me aware of, of every time I think something negative, I think about myself and it's like, I can't do this or, you know, I'm not sharp enough or, you know, this isn't me. And just realizing all the times that we, we tell ourselves and when you're aware of it, you can change it. So the cruelest lies we tell are the ones we tell ourselves. Yeah, Doug, I, I love that, man. And there's a, a great leadership exercise I do. Um, I, anytime I have a group of people and I would do it at Zoom, it makes it a little bit weird. Um, but when I'm in the room of people, there's a great exercise of sitting in silence for five minutes. Doesn't sound like a long time, but in silence, that is a grueling amount of time. But you sit in silence and you write on the piece of paper everything that comes to your mind good, bad, and different, literally anything that any thought that comes to your mind, you write it down. And what it what shows 99% of the time, it ends up going from, oh, I don't know why I'm doing this. This is weird into that negative self-talk. Human nature innately drives that negative self-talk. And it's an interesting piece attached to it, man, because you don't, like you, you said it perfectly, Doug, awareness of it. And the, the first chapter of my book is actually titled A Look in the Mirror. One of the things that was the biggest struggle for myself, I talked about loving myself again, right? For me, the biggest awareness point was that accountability partner, that battle buddy, he said those exact words. He's like, man, you've done all this external learning, but I'm willing to bet you don't know yourself. You don't even love yourself anymore. He's like, I challenge you. And this was the big shift for me. It's like, I challenge you, go upstairs, look in the mirror and tell yourself you love yourself. And me being the alpha male I am, right? Oh, I'm big and tough. I can do this. I love me some me, right? March upstairs, go to look in the mirror. Got I out of my mouth and immediately had a panic attack and could not tell myself I love myself looking in the mirror. The one person you should absolutely be able to say that to, I couldn't say it to myself looking in the mirror. And that was such a difficult thing. But that awareness started creating that shift for me. Well, why can't I say that to myself? And in my journaling, I got very existential in the thought process of why this, why that? Why is it so hard for human beings to do that, right? Why is it negative self-talk? The, the default in our minds makes no sense to me. 
but that's part of where, um, you know, there's a, a big piece and y'all, I apologize. I told Doug, I was trying to finish up a workbook. I have a workbook that's in alignment with the, the actual reading book. And it's a, a 30 day workbook focused on uh, tactics for every day. And that's, it, it's really highlights my journey. Every single day I had a five minute tactic attached to how do I further that? Right. And for me, recognizing like I couldn't tell myself I love myself like what the heck right why am I always beating myself up and and always down on myself that was such an awareness piece and Doug you hit it perfectly and my journaling shifted to those and call them what you will affirmations um, whatever that woo-woo stuff is right everybody's like oh that's too woo-woo I don't buy into it but the reality of it is the power of affirmations and re and positive reinforcement that's how I look at it Telling yourself every time you have that negative thought, man, I really actually love this about myself. When I meditate, uh, I love classical music. I'll put in uh, headphones and listen to classical music. It's very calming for me. So when I meditate, I'll throw in classical music, no lyrics, just the music and um, go through that cycle of positive self-talk. And I think that is such an important piece for us to realize overcoming that negative self-talk can only be done with positive self-talk. So highlighting and even writing a list of things that you love about yourself, write that list on it. it Y'all, it could be really difficult. That is actually one of the hardest things that I've done is making a list to repeat to myself of things I actually treasure about myself, the value I bring into the world. I actually had to reach out to friends and family. Hey, what value do you think I bring into this world? Cause it was so difficult for me to actually conceptualize. And as I made that list and I do those, those affirmations and those reinforcements, it shifted that dynamic for me. So now if I ever get down on myself, it instantly clicks in. Nope. I actually do this, this, and this really well. And I actually bring this value, this value, this value into this person's life. Right. And I highlight those things. So Doug, I think that's a phenomenal point and a phenomenal thing to look at, highlight and bring awareness to, to help that shift because we all are going to have a bad day. Like there's no getting away from that bad day, but recognizing how to overcome that is, you know, fall off the horse, get back on the horse type of thing. Recognizing how to overcome that is the power that I think that self mastery can really bring to us all. So anybody have anything else they want to throw in there as far as a challenge for yourself or um, Doug, I know you said leave some minutes from Q and a, so I don't know if you want to dive into that piece of it. Oh, absolutely. Uh, let's open the floor for any questions anyone has. It was all so crystal clear as mud. No Zach, questions. I do, I do have a question. Um, and for, by the way, thank you so much again for your service and being strong um, about holding up, uh, not you know, not letting that beat you and make you change uh, to know that you still have you have value to bring to still bring to this world especially when you giving this advice and sharing your story um, earlier you did mention that you did uh, you had seven businesses mm -hmm. how how are you able to handle all of that mm -hmm. like <laughs> <laughs> it, it's not easy I'll tell you and you know there, there's a, a series of things that I talk about um, I have a, a similar um, and Doug was a part of this um, which is how we met he was a speaker at one of these events um, on the business side I have a business group coaching side outside of the real estate space um, for just general business owners um, what I've learned is one through my community like Jason Fleeman's a part of that stuff, right? Doug Dean, Doug's been a part of it as a speaker attached to that. Seven businesses sounds like a lot, but I have a heck of a team around me and I have a heck of amount of supporters that help facilitate that. Um, I spend most of my time as a fractional COO, um, a business coach, a business consultant, really focused on operations, structure, processes. Uh, my MBA is in small business operations, um, what I found is crafting structures around things um, have helped build that. So I stepped out of five of my companies. They operate on their own. Um, the only two I'm involved with um, is the business coaching, business consulting side and my nonprofit because the nonprofit is very new. I uh, just launched back in November. And that nonprofit, um, what I realized is the alignment has to be right. So when I started the nonprofit, the nonprofit does the same thing my business coaching does. But in the veteran space, specifically for veteran owned businesses, 
right? So what I found is like creating the structures and the, pro the structures and the processes, getting those crafted, finding that piece. And I hired a business coach for it. I couldn't do it myself on my own stuff. So I hired a business coach, um, had him help me do all that. And he's like, you got to step out of that stuff and focus where you really are passionate. Where's that alignment? And he helped me identify that alignment. I want to help small businesses. I want to help veteran owned small businesses. And as I went down that journey, um, I never intended to write a book about my mindset stuff, my leadership stuff. I, my, the book I wanted to write, and is actually my second book that I'm writing, is called The Legacy of Leadership. And it's all about leading others. But when I realized I couldn't lead those people until I led myself better, until I got my mind right, until I got my structure right, you know, yelling at somebody to go do the right thing and I'm doing the wrong thing, didn't, didn't do anybody any good, right? So uh, I think that's a big piece is like structuring your day. And that's where I love starting with this conversation. It's a whole series of conversations, but starting your day, structuring your day, um, everything from time blocking, right? At noon, I walk the dog. Nobody's scheduling anything, right? But having that structure through the day has helped me to then structure out where am I, where am I allocating time? Um, I have two hours blocked for social media um, twice a week right? I have an hour blocked every single day for mindset, mindset recovery. Um, I have every Sunday, I'm a brunch bro. So every Sunday from 10 to 12, I have brunch. It is locked into my calendar. Nothing is going to interfere with it. Every Friday night, I have date night with my girlfriend. It is blocked at 5 p.m. till 10 p.m. It is date night. Nothing's going to interfere with that. I think having those boundaries and respecting those boundaries for business and the personal life, I think is huge. And I don't let people infringe on that. And then it allows me to then allocate time accordingly and then know tomorrow is another day. At the end of the day, there's, there's another day tomorrow, right? So if you don't get it today, is the house burning down with some of y'all, sorry, insurance, maybe the house is burning down, right? But recognizing like there, there's a lot of times you don't need to do it today. And we overburden ourselves with what we think we need to do today. And the reality of it is, you can get a lot less done in a day than you think you can, but you can get a lot more done in a month than you think you can. Hopefully that helps. Absolutely. Hey Zach, one more question from the chat. How do you overcome stress at home and not bring it to work? <laughs> I saw that one from Amanda. I appreciate the question. Um, you know, it's funny. I talk about bringing work stress home. Um, but the reality of it is for me, I, I don't know about y'all, but every time, every six months that my girlfriend reminds me to hang the TV, I get really aggravated with her reminding me every six months. It's a guy, guy joke. Hopefully guys relate to that. Um, no, I, I make a little bit of joke about it because there, there are stress that come from the home into work. Um, and, and honestly, I, Amanda, I'll point back to that morning routine. It's a big one. And you know, I don't have any kids, so I don't know where those stressors may come from. But a big one for me is identifying where's the stress coming from and really focusing on starting each day as a new day. I, I don't leave unresolved personal mindset issues. I don't leave them unresolved the night before. I don't go to bed angry. I am very adamant about like, if something's truly bothering me the night before, I want to start my day tomorrow fresh. So recognizing where's that stress coming from, what is that piece, and how do you attack that from it not being a stressor, especially to start the day, I think is huge. And then try to reset every morning, which is where I'm very protective of that mindset reset piece um, in the morning of the meditation, the reading, taking time to refill. This is a big one. Um, understanding, you know, a lot of people, and especially in, in, in the real estate space, a lot of people want to fill into every pour into somebody else's coffer, right? I want to pour into you I want to serve. I'm a servant. I'm a servant mentality. I'm a servant leader. And a lot of people fail to realize in order to give to others, you have to give to yourself first. To be the, the best mother, father, boyfriend, girlfriend, spouse, you have to be better yourself. You have to give to yourself before you can give others. And Amanda, that's what I would encourage. Are you taking the time for yourself? Are you being, and people think selfish is a bad word. I actually think selfish is a great word with the right context. Are you being selfish with yourself 
whether that's taking a bubble bath at night, maybe going for a run in the morning, are you preserving that time for yourself to decompress from home, from work, both ways, taking that time for yourself, sitting in the car for an extra 10 minutes and breathing, whatever that may be. I think that's a huge one uh, to really be selfish with yourself so that you can refill to continue to fill into others. Hopefully that helps, Amanda. Yes, I, uh, there, there's an interesting um, book. Um, it's called Positive Intelligence. And in that book, um, there's an assessment, kind of like a DISC profile assessment, um, but there's an assessment called Saboteurs. And it highlights how we self-sabotage. And if, if anybody's interested, I'll make sure Doug gets it out, but um, it's a free assessment to go take and it, sh it highlights how are you self-sabotaging yourself um, everybody has the judge. The judge is exactly what Doug talked about earlier, that inner critic, right? Being really harsh on ourself. Um, so that harsh piece, and Amanda, I saw you pop in and out. Um, but this assessment, the, uh, the saboteurs off of positive intelligence, highlights what people do as the giver, right? That is one of the saboteurs, the giver, um, where it's that selfless giving nonstop, always everybody else first. I'll give you the shirt off my back and run through the streets naked, right? Like that doesn't help anybody. But you realize like if the airplane's going down, they always tell you get your oxygen mask on first, help yourself first before you start helping those around you. Um, I, Doug, again, you hit it perfect. It's all about awareness. Once you become aware of how you're possibly self-sabotaging, then you can start recognizing it in your day. For me, uh, my two saboteurs, I'm the high achiever and I'm the people pleaser. So I only found achievement through pleasing other people, which means I always put everybody else first. I only got validating validation myself by giving to others, thinking about my background, police, military service. That is like a huge struggle for me, Amanda. Um, it's, it's, it's hard, but then also realizing I can't be at my best for them unless I took that time. So that positive intelligence, it's a great book. Um, definitely encourage folks to check it out. Hopefully that helps Amanda because it's, it is a, a common a common struggle for a lot of folks. And Doug, I know we're right at our two o'clock time, so I'll, I'll be quiet if you need to close this up. No, it's, uh, we try to keep it at right at about an hour, and I think we've done a fantastic job of that. Uh, I'll say in conclusion, I want to thank you for being here and joining us today. One of my favorite quotes is from the great philosopher Kenny Rogers and his song, The Gambler, uh, where he said, I hope you found an ace that you can keep. And I use that every chance I get when I teach CE classes. I hope you found an ace that you can keep. Uh, we record our Zoom calls. Um, we are going to clean it up, cut out some of the extraneous at the beginning and the end. Uh, and we will post it on our YouTube channel. And you'll get a follow-up email from us once it's posted so that you'll be able to go back and uh, to review the material. And not only this uh, Business Builder, but all of our Business Builder speaker series are there. So you're welcome to uh, go review any of those at any time. Uh, Zach's posted uh, his contact information on uh, LinkedIn. It's in the chat window. Um, and... Um, just want to thank you all for being here. Before we go, I know we're all uh, muted, so call it a golf clap. Everyone give Zach a golf clap and thank him for being our uh, guest speaker, our volunteer for today. Uh, Zach, in all seriousness, we appreciate you and the content you brought to us today. I've gotten some nice comments, even over text by phone, while we've been speaking about how much people have enjoyed your content today. We appreciate you being here. Awesome. Um, we thank you and appreciate you and uh, just be looking for the uh, follow up email in another week or so that uh, we'll have some follow on um, on how to access the uh, zoom YouTube recording and so forth. Awesome, Doug, I appreciate you y'all. Thank you all for being engaged with me today. I appreciate everybody. Thanks, Zach. We appreciate it. Thanks for being our guest today. And uh, we were glad to have you and um everyone else. Thanks for joining us today and we look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care.